Hey guys, what's up? Santa here, bringing you guys another video of Soccer Spirits. This is the Guide of Soccer Spirits Part 8. If you missed any of the previous parts, I'll have the link to the description below. Disclaimer, I am not too well, too good at pronouncing names of everything in Soccer Spirits, so please don't be offended that I say the name of your favorite player or something weirdly. It's just my, it's just natural for me, I guess. Now, without further ado, let's begin. Last time we left off, we were talking about Colosseum of Despair. We pretty much just went through the gist of everything on how it worked and everything. Today we will be going into the more advanced part of the Colosseum of Despair. Such as getting points and various strategies, action bars, um, and just like recommended units for Colosseum of Despair. We are actually closing in on the finale of Soccer Spirits, the guy. There's not going to be a few many more parts left. After this part, there should be two more parts left. Um, part 9 should be about space-time continuum, which shouldn't be much of a episode. It's just a rather short episode. And then the final episode is just pretty much me going through what I, like, just my recommendations and it's just stuff I, I, would, I would want you guys to do to advance forward. So, Colosseum and Despair. Scores or just this is actually just important in like normal story mode at if you're rather early on as well because um if you're like rank if you're like rank not even like rank thirty and you're like on almost beating story mode then it should be rather hard for you guys to get points which is something you need for the free mission to get the crystals and. Point, the point system is uh, is kind of complicated, but I can't. I'm not really exactly good at. Just, I'm not gonna describe all of it, like the depths of everything. I have this great website that describes all the everything. So if um, I have the link to that website in the description below. So if you guys want to check it out yourself and read the very in-depth guide about Colosseum information. It is in the description. It is in that website, but I'm just gonna be talking about like the gist of it, like just like the important parts of calls of like getting a score in a game, just any game in general. First off, time. Time is like really important. Let's say you could do like twice twice the damage. If you, if you like, buff up with more skills, like, active skills, like, take my Princess Meridian, for example. She, her, her active skill is, her active skill is 20% crit damage to the entire team for 15 minutes, but it requires one and a half spirit bar to achieve, which will be kind of hard, pretty hard to do in the later, in the later higher floors of Colosseum of Despair, because... Simply because it's the opponents are going to be tougher. They're probably going to break through your mid really easily. So you have to fight for it to get back into midfield. And midfield is usually where people buff up and call a team of despair. Just because it's like the easiest. Because backline is just for survival. Mid lines for buffing up. We're just like getting a clear path to front. And then front line is pretty much... Front line is just... One hit KOing, two hit KOing, just assist and tonum. That's pretty much all there is in Colosseum of Despair. However, you know, like I said once before, Colosseum of Despair, there is no set formation. As long as you win, your formation works. So, yeah. But, so basically, as I was saying, you can add more, you can like use skills and set up stuff. Like Cynthia Active, increase inflict the damage on the enemy team and stuff you can just build that up you can just build that up and just you know get ready to own the opponent but that takes like if that takes like about 20 more minutes of the game then it's not worth it time is really important it's better to one hit KO right off the bat or just you know end the game as soon as possible rather than do more damage over time but you know end the game at a much later base it's better to end the game fat earlier than later technically is what I'm getting at alright so what's more is that um, 
There are three main things to get points in Colosseum of Despair. Uh, there's more. There's more things and there's more complications and stuff. But like I said, I'm not too good at remembering all this stuff. I just remember the gist and the most important parts of it. Um, Colosseum of Despair, or just any game in Soccer Spirits, you know, like a soccer game, not like... I'm not talking about the app, Soccer Spirits, I'm talking about, like, these games I'm fighting here, like, for 10ST and 10 BP and stuff. These kind of games, the points are based off on your three top players. Your three top players' performances. So, you know, MVP is pretty much just the player who... MVP is pretty much the player that did the most damage or something, like, did the most damage. It's always, it's, like, calculated off, like, some decimal times or something. I don't remember the exact, but I just know what to do to get a lot of points, pretty much. It's always better to get with an active pass. If you're going for the one-hit KO strat, you gotta know that you're gonna one-hit KO, and then you gotta do an assist plus active to make sure you one-hit KO. Because that also gives you a lot of points. Um, so, the three main players are usually your attacker, your assist, and your striker in a game. Because, well that's the way I see it at least. You may use a forward passer. If you use a forward passer and call the same with despair, then it's a different story. But, let's see. We're going to do two test examples. We're both going to be doing the same. Both times we're going to be doing the same thing. So... Right now, Kyrie is just gonna normal penetrate for 1k for 1,069 damage. Has to Vanchi. Vanchi's gonna active as usual. We're gonna do some two tests here. As you can see, the score is 35,576. The MVP bonus is 8,000, the time bonus is 9,000. 9,142. That was with a Kyrie penetrate for 1,665 damage, and then passing. Now, if I remember correctly, the points should increase if I do this strat strategy. Man, I almost had a ST. Watch, watch this game not be my ball, and it's just like, come on. I can totally see that, though. The fact that it's not my ball. <laughs> and then Kyrie can't do his thing. I can see that happening, because RNG hates me. Watch. Watch it not be my ball. I can see it coming already. Oh, man. It's actually my ball. What do you know? But, yes, yeah, so I'm going to do the same exact thing as I did last time. I'm gonna penetrate to make sure that Kyrie doesn't get an act get a pass because he didn't get a pass last time. Oh man! Oh, that's right. Frick! I forgot. Ah, uh, that's gonna be a bit off then, because the test results is gonna be a bit off because I had I forgot I put Lee. I chose a Leah friend, which Ace does benefit Kyrie. But anyway, I'm gonna continue penetrating instead of passing this time, and then Vanchi's still not gonna get any active. He's not gonna actually no. It's it's all it's all good. Kyrie did do 400 more damage, but Vanchi didn't get a pass this time, so he didn't get a 200 plus. He didn't get a 200 buff pass. So let's compare the score, shall we? The score, this game's floor, score is 20,000 points higher. Basically, what I'm getting at is when your your attacker penetrates, right? Like let's see, he penetrates for 1,000 damage. He penetrates for 1,000 damage to score. That that 1,000 damage is going to be multiplied by like point something something, and then that's going to be added to your overall score. But let's see. Let's say Kyrie penetrates for 2K. He pen Kyrie penetrates for 2K, but Kyrie passes. You won't get that entire times point something something. You're gonna get you're gonna get times like point zero something something. I'm not sure if, if I'm right on that, but that's just the gist of it. You have to, if you want more points, you're going to penetrate, and then you're going to continue penetrating to keep the first row of points, basically. And then there's the assists. Like, and then there's the assists. 
Um, and so basically the three main players are your attacker because pen one straight penetration does a lot of damage. The striker obviously does the most damage when shooting. And then the assist do does the passing, which does actually add some, which actually does add points. But, you know, attacker usually don't pass for like 1k. 1k passes, which means they can't really make that their thing. They have to legit penetrate. That's because that's what they're built for, penetrating. That sounds terrible. But yes, um, let's see. Let's say, let's say Kario was penetrating but got reflexed. He did, the opponent, let's say, let's say this is hell mode. The opponent has 3k HP. Kario penetrates with 2,900 and something something. The opponent's left with like 3 HP but because the opponent reflexed Kyrio. Ky well, Kyrio still get, and then someone steals the ball. Like, let's say Eden steals the ball. And then passes to Vanchi and Vanchi one hit fails. Will we still get the points buff from from Kyrio? Yes, we will. Um, it's always basically the thing is a player's score and is always de just decide on their last on their last take their last action. Basically, Vanchi can penetrate, but that won't count as his final score. His, he has to shoot for his like final score basically basically I'm saying man <laughs> this is getting really complicated I'm, I'm not too great at describing this explaining this I'm sorry but basically a player's score points action is always decided by their last action which is why when you pen do a successful penetrate you have to penetrate once more to keep the to keep the the role the success. But like, if you pass, then it's desynchronized with her last action, which just takes it off the scoreboard. It doesn't take it off the scoreboard, that's your score, but, you know, it's not going to be as high as if you can kept your old score by keep pe continuing penetrating. Man, it's almost 1 o'clock, I should probably end it off soon. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I think I'm going to end it off right here. I hope I I hope you guys understood that somewhat to a certain degree, because actually no I have some more to I have some more to I have some I have some more to describe other than the score. There's also like plenty of strategies you can do in Call of Duty Despair. Like if you're a Ravian user, which I really do not recommend nowadays because there are some floors out there like starting from floor 33 Call of Duty Despair they stop Ravian completely. Jin on floor 33 heals 30% HP and he has 4k HP. Ravian only does 20% da HP damage to the entire team, so it's just not worth it in general, you know? You, Jin heals more than Ravian can do to him, so there you go. But there's plenty of strategies, but main all strategies pretty much have a striker, a frontline assist totem just for damage output. I have... Well, not Victoria. I have I have a Yuri with EBM, endlessly burning matter, which is really nice. But I don't use Yuri because Vanchi prefers speed over more damage, more pass effect. Actually, he actually does less damage with Yuri, even with the EBM. So that's it is what it is. Um, I have a two super Zebrori, although I use Kai actually for. For Coliseum climbing later on because Kai is just stronger than Zabrori. But if my Zabrori was max superb and had a Ballotel on, then I would be using Zabrori because Zabrori is a PVE GK goalie. He is built for PVE. Um, I would recommend you guys to get Asilla. Asilla is a really stellar GK. She is currently the best PvP goalie and the best PVE. I wouldn't say the best PvE goalie, but the she's just she kills two birds with one stone. Like Zabro, you can't you really cannot use Zabro for PvP. You you he's his deal was PvE. Asilla can be used for PvP and PvE. Asilla is really great. Also, Scylla Scylla backline. Some people really do not understand why people use Scylla backlines. I use Scylla backline honestly a lot. 
because I just find it to be like really useful. Here's one formation I use a lot in like, one sec. Well, I actually kind of have to go now, so. But yeah, this is one, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to, I'll pick off where I left off. I'll pick off where I left off right here next time, but I'm just going to finish this part real quick. This formation is really good because I make sure Kai holds the ball, like, 24-7 because Kai is the only one that can survive. Anyone else holding the ball and cause him despair will probably die. And Scylla makes sure that, makes sure that, Scylla backline just pretty much makes sure that Kai holds the ball 24-7 with her gap of light, making sure that everyone else gets the, gets action bar recovery. It's just action bar control, which is really, really important Call Coliseum and Despair at time, just pretty much everywhere. You have to time everything right and everything. It's, it's a really complicated process, but... Hope you guys enjoyed. I will have the link to the description to that website below in the in below. And see you guys next time. Bye.